I'm Brandon Bonifer, and today, guys, we're gonna show you a review using OneNote on an e-paper device. Yes, we're gonna show you a review using the Onyx Books Air 2 Plus with OneNote. Now, e-paper devices have come a long way in the last few years, and they're really new to the tablet industry, and they offer that paper-like feeling. So if you wanna learn more about e-paper devices, digital planning, note-taking, take a minute, subscribe to the channel. Over the next several weeks, we're gonna unleash videos that show us how this product compares to other products like Remarkable and Supernote in the e-paper device lineup. But today, guys, I wanna show you how to use it with OneNote. All right, so first and foremost, I'm gonna give you guys a little background on me. I'm Brandon Bonder, for creator and founder of the Key to Success planning system. A planning system built for you, built digitally, so you can take handwritten notes, so you can expand your ideas, set your goals, build routine, and develop those habits that are gonna make you successful. If you are anyone that has ever had the privilege to use paper planning, you know how remarkable it is. That thought, the idea of taking a pencil and connecting to paper and writing down your ideas, there's something about it that's just not replaceable. And over the last 10 years, I've started to work with tablets thinking this is the opportunity to get rid of all those binders, all those notebooks, and be able to use it so that I can plan my life and carry my notes wherever I go, wherever I am, and not have a stack or a library behind me or a bag full of binders with me. And over the last few years, I've looked at tons of different devices. If you guys follow my channel, you'll see all the different devices, all the different applications we use. And I'll say it right now, I've been a huge fan of OneNote. And the reason being is I'm not a singular ecosystem guy. I like Android, I like Windows, I'm a big Apple boy. And uh, big Apple boy, I know it probably sounds Keep her moving. Uh, but anyway, I am someone that has wanted to have my notes wherever I go across every device that I have. And OneNote has really been the only utility that has been able to do that for me. So we built a planning system on OneNote that allows you to have that traditional planning like feel. You can go ahead and create vision boards. You can go through a budget planner. You can go through your daily activities. You can work on those key goals that are gonna advance you and help build out those habits that are gonna make you a better individual, a better friend, a better neighbor, and more successful. But over the last two years, looking at the Remarkable and other e-paper devices, I've been so intrigued by that distraction-free mobility. Yes, mobility. I can be looking at God's country in my truck, jotting down my thoughts and ideas. I can be at my desk. I can be at a coffee shop. I can be anywhere. And I don't have all the notification, the bells coming in that I'd expect with my iPad or my Surface, those interruptions. So it really allows me to connect with my thoughts. And that's what the e-paper device has been able to do for me. The challenge is they were there and not everywhere. And today, guys, when I learned about this device using OneNote and it being an e-paper device, let's just jump into it and you can see for yourself. So this is the device itself. I'm not gonna jump into the details of the operating system, the specs, or anything of that nature. I'm really gonna focus on OneNote and the abilities you have to use this device for note-taking in OneNote. First and foremost, it is black and white. You'd expect that in an e-paper device, but it does allow you to take your notes and highlight, and you should expect to see those notes in color or as you would expect them on, say, an iPad, a Surface, Windows, or Apple laptop. They have a native notes app, but today we're gonna to talk about OneNote, so we're gonna jump into the apps. This was an app I was able to download from the Play Store. You can also have, I have Note Shelf, but again, we're gonna talk about OneNote today. So OneNote is an application that runs across any platform or ecosystem. You can use it on your iPad. You can use it on a Surface. You can use it on many devices and tablets, such as the new released Samsung S8 Ultra, the S22, as well as many devices like an iPad, a Surface, and so forth. But here, we are using the e-paper device with OneNote. Now, this is running the 
Android based apps. And you guys have heard me talk about the different features that OneNote enables across different platforms. Yes, the desktop version has a lot more features, but there's so many tips and tricks that we've provided you guys. When you go to your tablet, you can use them for note taking. You can go back to your desktop and convert that handwritten note to text, as well as do many other different things. So go ahead, check out that video, 12 tips that are gonna change the way you note take with OneNote. But with the Android app, we have the basics that you would expect to allow us to note take. So in our planning system, we focus on a handful of different things. I'll show you some navigational tools. 2023 planner is coming out rather soon, but you use the navigation bar on the left. You have a second navigation ribbon here and an individual ribbon here. So we break everything down into quarters, then months, and then to our daily pages. So we're gonna to go to January 3rd here, and you're gonna see our daily page. And you're gonna see that this looks like a traditional planner. You have your daily key three, your daily to-dos, you have a time slot where you can go ahead and handwrite, highlight, you can type in the planner, and you can take notes. Now, let's talk about note-taking with this device, because that's the part that gets me the most excited. So across the top, in the top ribbon here, you have your home, your insert, draw, and view. Now each one of these have different functions in the actual application itself, but today we are in the draw and we're using a stylus, so those items are not grayed out. We have the ability to tap on the pencil and select a color, as well as use a slider to select a thickness. Now I usually write pretty thin so I can keep it there. Now if you're someone that wants to have a couple different pen tools enabled, you go ahead and you can see here I have this one just a little bit thicker. So I can go ahead and write here and I can go ahead and write here with this one. And you'll see there's a slight difference once the screen refreshes in the thickness. And we can go ahead and we can erase that by clicking on the eraser. Hear that sound? It sounds like pencil and paper. That alone is intriguing, right? So, so we can go ahead and we can write notes and that's one thing you guys are probably most interested to know is how well does this actually handwrite? If you go into the navigational ball, you have the ability to go into these settings here and you can go ahead and adjust the fresh rate and the refresh speed. I've been pretty comfortable with normal speed at these settings. I find that's been working pretty good when it comes to handwriting and I'll show you for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead, select my pencil, and I'm gonna write a note. Now what I've noticed is it'll keep my text bold and then when it refreshes, it'll go to the stroke thickness that I've selected uh, as my default and that'll sync and transpose over to my other notes as well. Now I can go ahead and highlight that. So I can go ahead and use the lasso tool. Now one thing I found with the lasso tool is when you use it, it doesn't do the best of the job selecting large areas. Um, and I think that's native to the device and the memory capabilities of it. Uh, it tends to only want to select a small area. If you select a larger area, it seems like the screen will freeze up. But if you have a small item that you want to resize, move, uh, you can do that uh, with the lasso tool. So there's a lot of different functionalities at OneNote that you're able to use in the Android ecosystem. And one of those is hyperlinking. Now we did an entire video to show you how to do hyperlinking on the iPad on the desktop version, but on some of these tablet-like versions, there's limitations to what you can do with hyperlinking. Now, most every other application, Remarkable especially, you have no capabilities of hyperlinking. So this process might seem like it's a step or two, but the fact that you can do it is absolutely amazing. So let's just say I wanna go ahead and add an additional page of notes. I'm gonna go into here, I'm going to my type, I'm gonna to go to page here and do bracket, and then I'll do a second bracket, and then I'm gonna type the name of the page. In this case, I'm gonna type page two. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in bracket, bracket. And instantly you saw how that turned to page two with hyperlink. I tap on that page two, and now it says open, edit, link, remove ink, 
cut, copy, and select. I'm going to open it. And what that has done for me, it has created a new page in my planner instantly. I can go into view. I can go into page. I'm going to choose rule lines. And what I did is I created another page that I can take notes. Now, where did that page go? It was created at the bottom of this section. So if I jump back up to the top of that section and go back to January 3rd and go over here, you can see it says page two there. Again, if I tap on it and hit open link, it'll take me to that page. So the fact that you can do hyperlinking and create your own hyperlinks inside this device using OneNote, that to me for you guys is gonna be pretty big, especially if you're heavy journal note takers and you're using this as the daily planner, you'll be able to expand your notes from one day to the next day, but then hyperlink all those together using that daily planner as an index. You can also use this to copy meeting pages, copy project pages and link those in the planner. And you can see that we've done and shown you guys how to do that throughout various different applications, but bringing it to an e-paper device where the note taking experience is non-destructive and you're not interrupted is it's impressive. Absolutely impressive. So far with this device overall, guys, I'm totally happy with it. Now I have to remember, this is not a robust laptop. It's not a robust tablet like the iPad Pro. So there's going to be some, ah, some things that have a little bit of lag. There's going to be some time that's needed between transition from one section to the next. But again, that makes up for it by not having any of those distractions coming through. But the fact that I can take my notes on here in that environment and then go back to all my other devices and it's there is absolutely remarkable. And this here is a remarkable killer in my opinion. Now, there's other note-taking applications that you can use. So if you're into PDF annotation apps, I'm gonna show you guys in time how you can use this device with various apps for digital note-taking. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. If you learned one thing, hit the like button. And if you got any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below. Myself or someone in the community, I'm sure will reach out to you and answer your questions. Guys, I'm Brandon Bonifer, creator and founder of the Key to Success Planning System. And if you wanna learn more about that system and how you can improve your daily life, take ownership of your goals, get your vision and your habits in order, go ahead, check out the description. There's a link to our website there and you can learn all about it. You can hear more about it from me. Until then, guys, I can't wait to see you in the next video. I have a lot more to do with this device, so stay tuned.